the preservation power of dedicated service. Our month of February will be a month where we'll experience dedication for releases, recoveries, and replications. The preservation power of dedicated service. Exodus chapter 23 and in verse 25, he said, and ye shall serve the Lord your God. And he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. There shall nothing cast their young nor be barren in thy land. The number of thy days. I will fulfill the preservation power of dedicated service. Service to God, and I mean dedicated service, passionate service, wholehearted service. Dedicated service, passionate service, wholehearted service to God facilitates both vitality and longevity for man. Vitality and longevity for man. In fact, prosperity vitality, longevity. You shall serve the Lord, your God. He shall bless your bread and your water. That is prosperity. I will take sickness away from you. That is vitality. There shall nothing cast their young nor be barren in your land. Productivity. And then the number of your days I will fulfill. Longevity. That is, if I serve God passionately, I serve God dedicatedly, I serve God wholeheartedly, I am guaranteed supernatural supplies or prosperity. I am guaranteed vitality. I am guaranteed productivity. I am guaranteed longevity. Do we have any examples of people like that in scripture. Very quickly, I will look at five of them. One, Abraham. Abraham was called, Abraham was called the servant of God. In Genesis chapter 26, verse 24, he was the servant of God. And the Lord appeared unto him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham, thy father. Fear not. For I am with thee, and I will bless you and multiply your seed. For my servant, Abraham's sake, my servant, Abraham. Psalm 105, verse 42. We saw another reference to Abraham. For he remembered his holy promise, and Abraham, his servant. What was the outcome of Abraham, the servant of the Lord? Apart from the outcome of plenty of supernatural supplies in Genesis chapter 13 and in verse 2, and plenty of supernatural supplies in Genesis chapter 24 and in verse 1, God blessed Abraham in everything. He was rich in cattle, in silver, and gold. Apart from that, Genesis 25, verse 7 and 8, the scriptures let us know that the days of Abraham was 175 years old. Verse 8. And Abraham gave up the ghost and died in a good old age. An old man, full of years, and was gathered to his people. An old man, full of years. Abraham lived in health and died in strength. Did you hear what I just said? 
He lived in health and died in strength. Could not be cut short before his time. Because the Bible referred to him as the servant of God. You shall serve the Lord. You shall take sickness from the midst of you. And the number of your days you will fulfill. I speak to someone here by prophecy. The way Abraham lived and the way he ended. That shall be the story of your life. You believe that. Shout the loudest. Amen. Amen. Example number two. Moses was called the servant of God. Plenty places. Exodus chapter 4 and in verse 10, God referred to Moses as his servant and Moses said unto the Lord, or Moses referred to himself as the servant of the Lord. He said unto the Lord, O Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. But I'm slow of speech and of a slow tongue. I am thy servant. Exodus 14, 31. Exodus 14, 31. And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. And the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. His servant Moses. His servant Moses. Numbers chapter 12 and in verse 6 all the way to verse 8. Again. Reference, God speaking said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I the Lord will make myself known unto him in a vision. And I will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses, servant, servant, servant Moses. It's not so. He is faithful in all my house. With him I will speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore then, were are you not afraid to speak against my servant, Moses? Servant, servant. Deuteronomy chapter 34 and in verse 5. God again referring to Moses. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died in the land of Moab. According to the word of the Lord. Verse two, next verse. And he, and he buried him in the valley in the land of Moab over against Beth Peor. But no man knew it of his sepulcher unto this day. We'll leave that for another day. And Moses was a hundred and twenty years old when he died. His eye was not dimmed, nor his natural force abated. His eye was not dimmed. His natural force was not abated. The Moses lived in health and died in strength. He could not be cut short before his time. Despite pastoring the most rebellious congregation any pastor will ever pastor. Three and a half million of them. They complain over everything. Over everything. It's a congregation that can give instant hypertension and cerebrovascular accident. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? That is the, 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 the blood vessels in the brain ruptured for over, over pressure. That was Moses. Despite that burden, Korah and Abira, Datam, they stood and said, who do you think you are? Despite that, the man wangled his way with ruggedity and audacity and ferocity and kakarakarity until he reached the age of 120 years. I tell you something, no pressure shall kill you before your time. That amen is not a good one. No stress shall kill you before your time. I announce to you today, you shall fulfill your days. Say after me, I shall fulfill my days. I shall live in health. I shall end in strength. Everyone here who have an eye affliction, by the anointing with which I preach, that eyesight problem is over forever. Short-sightedness, long-sightedness, astigmatism, partial blindness, total blindness. If at the age of 120, the eyesight of Moses was sharp, by that revelation, your eyes clear now. That was Moses, the servant of the Lord. Then you move to Job. Job, God's servant. Job chapter 1 and in verse 8. God speaking to Satan said, Have you considered my servant Job? That there is none like him in the earth. 
servant Job. You shall serve the Lord. He shall bless your bread and your water. Servant Job. In Job chapter 42 verse 7 to 8, when God began to rebuke the friends of Job, he said, and it was so that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz, the Temanite, my wrath is kindled against you and against your two friends. For you have not spoken of me, the thing that is right, as my servant Job has done. Therefore take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams and go to my servant Job and offer up yourselves for yourselves a bonds offering and my servant Job. Ah, may God refer to you like that. May you serve God until he will be saying my servant, my servant, my servant, my servant on every corner at every mention of your name. You, 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 you believe that shall the Lord and say amen. You know what? Job served. And Satan tried to test the product of his service. The enemy tried to confront him despite his service of God. But the enemy failed woefully. That is why I said today there will be witchcraft failure. There are people and situations around you challenging your faith in God. Challenging your belief in God. They are challenging. They want to see whether you will backslide. They want to see whether you will give up on God. They want to see whether you are going to stop going to church and find out an alternative. But Job said, even though he slay me, I am going to follow him. I am going to trust him. I am going to continue with God. And at the end, the devil was the loser. 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 I don't know who God is sending me to talk to here tonight. But I am here to tell you, keep on keeping on. Keep on serving God. Keep on doing the right thing you know to do. Even if the devil is challenging your faith, challenging your followership, challenging your service of God, at the end of the day, the devil shall be the loser. I am, I am particularly inspired to tell somebody. It doesn't matter what you are, what is confronting you now. At the end of the day, hear me. You will lose nothing. And the devil will gain nothing. I'll say that again. It doesn't matter what the devil has thrown at you or what is confronting your life and your destiny now. At the end of the day, you would have lost nothing and the devil would have gained nothing. You will lose nothing and the devil will gain nothing. In fact, you will gain double. Whatever the devil is saying, you will never get. You will get double of it. Apart from double wife or double husband. Is there somebody here? Why do I say so? God gave the Job double of what the devil attacked. God gave him double. Job chapter 42 verse 16. All the way to verse 17. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job now verse 16. All right, okay, verse 10. Uh, uh, when he prayed for his friend. Also the Lord gave Job twice. As much as he had before. What the devil attacked. God doubled it. Move to verse 16. And, and after this, Job lived 140 years and saw his sons and his sons' sons, even four generations. Hey! Job saw his son and saw the son of his son and saw the son of the son of his son. Ha, <laughs> And after that, Job lived 120 years. We don't know after. We don't know how old Job was. 
before he had the attack. But after that, after the attack, he lived 120 years more. After this, lived Job. After everything. If he was 60 years before he was attacked, 60 plus 120. If he was 40 years before the attack, 40 plus 120. After this, after all these things, the devil wanted to finish him on the road. But when he went beyond the devil, he just kept on going. <laughs> 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, 70 years, 80 years, 90 years, 100 years, 110, 120. You will see the end of that devil. I don't know who God sent me to speak to here tonight. You will see the end of the devil. The devil shall not see your end. You will see the end of witchcraft in your family. You will see the end of ancestral curses in your family. They shall not see your end. You believe that shall the Lord say amen. Look at somebody around you and tell them, you, you will see the end of the devil. The devil cannot see your end. Take note of that prophecy. After it is all said and done, the devil would have gained nothing and you would have lost nothing. In fact, your gain will be double. That's a revelation. That was Job. Then you move on to David. David was God's servant. In Psalm 89 and in verse 20, he said, I have found David, my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. Psalm 18 and in verse 1, the introduction to that psalm. If you have a Bible that writes on top of the psalm, the introduction. It says, the psalm of David, the servant of the Lord. When the Lord delivered him from all his enemies. The psalm of David. The, I'm sure you know that, that kind of Bible. Where you have on top of it the writing on the introduction of the psalm. When the Lord delivered him from all his enemies. David, the servant of the Lord. Psalm 89 verse 1 to 3. Psalm 89 verse 1 to 3. I will sing all the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing all the mercies of the Lord. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness, thy faithfulness. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. I will sing all the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing. All the mercies of the Lord. Verse 2. For I have said, mercy shall be built up forever. Thy faithfulness shall thou establish in the very heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn unto David, my servant. What was the end of that addicted servant? First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 26. 28. Thus David, the son of Jesse, reigned over all Israel. And the time that he reigned over Israel was 40 years. Seven years reigned he in Hebron, and 33 years he reigned in Jerusalem. And he died. How? In good old age, full of days, full of riches, full of honor. And Solomon, his son, reigned in his stead. I Announce to somebody, you will not end in disgrace. <laughs> hey! Full of honor, full of honor. You will not die in shame. You will not end in shame. Your story cannot end in shame. You will not end in disgrace. Your life will not end as a mockery. They will mock your life for serving God. Full of riches. You can't die empty-handed. You can't die empty-handed. You can't die empty-handed. 
full of days. You can't be cut short before your time. Good old age. Not bad old age. You know bad old age? That kind of old age where children are praying for the parent to die. That kind of old age. That kind of bad old age. They have to put your in bag and toilet and all that. They are cleaning the bed all the time. It's in pain, it's crippled, it's paralyzed, it's under pressure, it's mad, it's mental. Screaming in the night, nobody can sleep. That is bad old age. God forbid. No good old age. Age 90, sharp. Age 100, smart. Still blessing children, playing with grandchildren, carrying little babies up. Sharp in the mind. Photographic mentality. It can remind you of what happened 30 years ago. You know good old age? Where the father is not, a, is not even begging the children for money. If you gave him anything, it's an addition to what he has. It's only to secure his blessing. Not that he's bankrupt. Not that he's lacking. He's even giving you and your children his inheritance. Out of all, out of his wealth and treasure. Good old age. You will last long. And you will not last as a liability. That amen can be better. I believe that God is speaking to somebody here tonight. If you are that particular one, your amen will be louder than this. Take your seat. He died in strength. And how many of you know that nobody faced hazards in the Old Testament like David. The same way nobody faced hazards in the New Testament like Paul the Apostle. Old Testament? Is it lions? Is it bears? Is it Goliath? Golizad? According to one child? All manner. Amalekites? The javelin of Saul? Pressure from his own son, Absalom? And his son, and other son was the name of the, the firstborn. Ah, not Ammon. Adonijah, the son of Haggit. That was the first one that rose. And then Solomon. All these things upon David. Plus 66 battles. He wiped all of them out. And continued living. That is why I'm here to announce to somebody you will outlive every battle around you. You will outlive every conflict around you. You will outlive every confrontation around you. You will see the end of your battles. The battles cannot see your end. If you are saying amen, say it like a believer. What he does for one, he does for all. The battles cannot see your end. You will see the end of the battles one by one by one by one. The devil will not take you by surprise. You will take that devil by surprise. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. That was David, God's servant. Five, Daniel. He served God. I won't get into detail on that because you know of Daniel. The king told Daniel when they conspired against Daniel, your God whom you servest, whom thou servest, Daniel chapter 6 verse 16, he will deliver you from the lions. Then the king commanded and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, thou God whom thou servest continually, you are not pretending I am aware that you are serving God. All those who conspired against you, they also know that you are real. That God won't fail you. 
Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. The man of the world may let you down, but Jesus. Anybody knows that ancient song? 70s, 80s. Your brother may let you down. You don't know the response? Your sisters may let The man of the world may let you down, but Jesus. You don't know the song. Your father, your mother, the man of the world. Your trusted friend. <laughs> your boss in the office. The man of the world. But Jesus. Everybody sing it. Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. The man of the world may let you down. He never, never fails. Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. The man of the world may let you down. Brother, you your sister, let you down. the man of the world, your roommate, you your lecturer. what the king said. I like what the king said. That thy God whom thou servest, I bear you witness that you are serving him. That God, even though I am not part of you, I'm not a Christian, I'm not of God, I'm not, I'm not of the covenant tribe of Israel, but I bear you witness that you are serving him. And he will deliver you. And in verse 20, in the morning he ran and he came. The Bible says, and when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And, and the king spake and said unto Daniel, Oh, Daniel, lamentable voice. Servant of the living God, servant, servant, servant. Is thy God whom thou servest, not occasionally, not partially, not half-heartedly, continually, is that God able to deliver you from the lions? He was waiting in trepidation to hear a voice. Then he heard a voice. O oh, king, live forever. I do. I'm still alive. I am alive. I am not the one to be eaten by the lions. I am the one to, I de-lionize the lions. I de-lionize the lions. I de-lionize the lions. They lost their lionic capacity because lions don't eat lions. That's the message for another day. Is God speaking to anybody here? This is your word. It doesn't matter who is conspiring against you because of your faith. Daniel, it was a conspiracy, a physical human conspiracy to challenge his faith in God. It doesn't matter wherever they have conspired because of your faith in God. Today, the conspiracy is broken. And you are coming out victorious. Shout the loudest, amen. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Ah. Time is gone. But let me mention one person from the New Testament. His name, Paul the Apostle. The certified servant. Paul said in Romans chapter 1, verse 1, 
referring to himself, he said, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel. So he was a servant first before he was an apostle. There are apostles that are not servants. There are pastors that are not servants. There are prophets that are not servants. The servant is one who serves. He's addicted to service. He's on standby for errands. We'll define that another day. In Titus chapter 1, verse 1, again, he defined himself as Paul, a servant of God, and then an apostle of Jesus Christ. The, what was most important to Paul was his servanthood, not his apostleship. There's nobody who can be a true apostle who has not graduated from being a servant. And how did Paul survive? 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 27. He said, Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors more abundant. In stripes above measure. In prisons I went more frequently. In debts I confronted death too many times. Of the Jews, twice. Five times I received 40 stripes except for one. I was beaten with rods three times. I was stoned once. I was shipwrecked three times. I lived inside the depth of the sea for 24 hours. Are you fish? Even fish comes out at times. In journeys of the dangers of waters, dangers of robbers, perils of my own countrymen, and so on and so forth, until he died as Paul the aged in Philemon chapter 1 verse 9 he calls himself Paul the aged. All these things couldn't finish me. I came as an old man until in Timothy 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 6 he said I am now ready to be offered. I, I, I can agree to die now. If I die now it was not death who took me. It was me who's who surrendered myself to, to sleep. I am now ready. Before now, I wasn't ready. And since I was not ready, no bastard death could locate me. Paul, the servant. Now, what, how does service bring about longevity or vitality? Number one, I'm rushing because of time. Service commits God to the fulfillment of the days of his servants. That is, service commits God to the fulfillment of the days of his servants. You shall serve the Lord your God. I will take sickness from you and I will ensure that no devil subtract one day from your life. If you are to live for 120 days, 120 years, one day, no devil can take one day out of that time. I am committed to the fulfillment of your days on earth. Number two, service provokes the defense and protection of God. For the life of his servant. He provokes the defense and the protection of God. For the life of his servant. Psalm 91 verse 14. 15. Because he has set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high. Because he has known my name. He shall call on me. And I would answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I would deliver him. I will honor him. With long life will I satisfy him. And show him my salvation. Because he has set his love upon me. When he is in danger. When they plan to finally eliminate him. I will move in and rescue him. I will step in there and make a way out. It provokes the defense, the protection and the deliverance of God. For the life of his servants. Number three. All right, okay. That's, that's defense. Number three is, is the last one I said. Service provokes 
the deliverance and intervention of God for his servants. Deliverance and intervention of God for his servants. That was Psalm 91 verse 14 to 15 that I just quoted. The scripture for the last one was Malachi chapter 3 verse 16 to 17. The one of defense and protection. 17. He said, and they shall be mine, said the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels and I will spare them. As a man spared his son that served him, I will spare them. Something wanted to finish them, I just spared him. I spared their life. I will spare them. Not everybody is easily wasteable. Many of us say when you, go, when you see God, he will show you how many times he spared you. Did you hear what I just said? He will show you how many times. He said, do you remember the time when you had one, so, one fever so? Oh, so it was meant to be death. He said, do you remember the other time when you were traveling on the road and the car some assaulted or was running into a trailer? Oh, I spared you at that time. It was meant to be death. I prophesy to somebody here, your God and my God shall spare you over and over and over and over again. <laughs> Number four, service, dedicated service, positions the servants of God in supernatural authority. Service positions the servants of God in supernatural authority. Luke chapter 10 and in verse 17. He said, And the servant returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. But for serving me the way you are doing, going out on evangelism like that, I give unto you power. To tread on serpents. Serpents means danger. Serpents means disease. Serpents means death. To tread on disease, to tread on danger, to tread on death. And scorpions, and scorpions means pain. It means poison. I, to tread on pain and tread on poison and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means scratch you. <laughs> hey! Somebody scream, I have authority. Louder, I have authority. Supernatural authority. Because I serve. You shake hands with wizard, his witchcraft disappeared. You shake hands with occultic man, his power finish. When he reaches the occultic oven, they will flog him very well. For missing road... To, Say, where did you go and you spoiled our power like this? I'm sorry. I shook hands with somebody. Say, next time we pull, they pull his here. beat him very well. When next you see you, we're moving like chicken that rain beat. <laughs> I said, this man is avoiding me. I don't know why he hates me. Only he knows why he's avoiding you. Hallelujah. Over all the, I announce to you, the next time they will come around you with their power, it will fail. The power will be absolutely destroyed. Shout the loudest. Amen. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Oh my God. And finally, service activates the ministry of angels around the life of God's servants. Around the lives of God's servants. It acted. Angels are just around. Is thy God whom you serve continually able to save you? Yes, he sent angels. Daniel 6 and in verse 20, 21. He sent his angels. When you walk in his vineyard, 
you walk in the company of co-servants. Angels are co-servants. When John the Baptist, John the Beloved wanted to bow for one angel, the angel said, no, don't do that. I am your fellow servant. We are together. You are serving in the terrestrial. I am serving in the celestial. Oh, we are together, we are together. Don't bow for me. Let's bow for him. So you, you are working in the company of co-servants. You, you do, what, the, you do what, the, what man can do. They do what the celestial can do. You work in the visible. They work in the invisible. So most times people think you are, you are, you are alone. For where? Some of us, when we move, we move with a host. Including some of us all seated here. Somebody say aloud, amen. amen. From this day forward, the ministry of angels shall be clear around your life. It shall be clear to every devil around you. It shall be clear to every witch around you. Shout the loudest, amen. amen. Finally, what are the keys to dedicated service? Number one, clearly identify your purpose for existence. Clearly. What do you want out of this life? What is your life about? What is your life all about? What do you want out of this life? You want to be known? You want to be popular? You want to be known as the one who wears the latest dress? Best hair fashion? Ask yourself that question. What is the summary of my existence? What is the implication of my life? What am I about? What drives me? You want to make money. What is driving you to make that money? And to make the money, to use it to do what? Jesus said, I believe it was in John chapter four, 9 verse 4 there about, he said, I must walk the walks of him that sent me while it is day. I must walk. This is what my life is about. Someone sent me. And I, 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 am, I am about his duty. Wish you know that I must be about my father's business. First John chapter 3 and in verse 8, for this sake was the son of man manifested that he might destroy works of the enemy. What's your life about? Psalm 122 verse 1. I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, you have just one life to live. What do you want to do with that one life? In what way is the kingdom of heaven enhanced out of that one life? By the time it is all said and done, what is it that will follow you from this world into eternity? Until that is clear to you, you can never serve well. I preach every time with all my life. <laughs> I used to write on top of my sermon note, on top of the top of the note, on the top, the first thing I'll write is preach this as if it is your last. My wife said, so please, please, it's not your last. <laughs> I said, no, it can never be my last, but I want to do it as if it's the final. I want to put everything into it. So that I, I don't have any regret tomorrow that there's nothing I could have done or said that wasn't said. Preaching in youth meeting, the same thing. Let us 
Where there is no definition, there will be no destination. And where there is no definition, there can be no dedication. There can be no dedication. Clearly identify. Yes, I will make money. Yes, I will be important. Yes, I will be in the office. But many souls must escape hell for heaven because of me. But the kingdom must be maximally expanded that I am alive. Monies from me will build plenty churches, send missions, sponsor several crusades. With this one life, by the time I, went, I go to eternity with God in heaven, I must hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Just one life. I'm not going to live that one life as a distraction to people in my, with my lifestyle. Clearly, identify your purpose for existence. What you want out of life. What you want. You see some people on the road like moving about like they want to cut in the middle. What do you want? And you are moving like that to church. What do, wait till where you want. At times police ask you on the road, or God waiting you carry. You can ask yourself, waiting you carry come for this life. What are you marketing? What are you pushing? What are you exhibiting? Some people, their greatest exhibit is their flesh. What do you want to exhibit? What do you want to publicize? What do you want to announce? That's number one. For dedicated service, number two. Make the purpose of God the priority of your life. He said... But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. All. Papa Yedeba calls it the jackpot of life. Where you do one thing and you get every other thing. You make one move and you don't need to make other moves. You have made every move in one move. The move towards God is the move towards good. Everything is added. Make the purpose of God the priority of your life. Yes, you, you, you are a worker in the office, yes. You are this and you are that. But in all of that, does, does, is there any place for kingdom there? The small time I practice medicine, my consultation table was my altar and pulpit. As many as possible must know that Jesus is Lord. As many as possible. Oh no. Count, I, don't, I don't know the number of people I, I led to Christ on that table, consultation table. I, 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 I determined that I'm not going to treat this body and leave the soul to go to hell. I'm not, I'm not going to be a fashion designer and make physical fashion for you and don't care where the spirit that is wearing the body, that is wearing the cloth will go at the end. If I can't preach to you, I'll give you a tract. Am I communicating at all? And the tract will do the work. And there are some people who say, oh, I have my religion. I say, okay, you have your religion. Can we still pray? All religions pray. Yes. Say after me, oh God, oh God, I'm not mentioning Jesus now. me to know you. Help me to know you. Oh God, oh God, may I not die from this world until I have known the true God. Until I have known the true God. May I not die from this world until I have known the true God. Help me Lord to know you in truth. Help me Lord to know you in truth. Thank you Lord. Thank you God. Amen. God heard it. I've sown a terrible seed. The prayer will haunt him for life. 
Jesus will visit him in the night. You say, you say last time, you don't want to doubt, you know the true God, I am the true God. <laughs> oh, yeah, I pray, I pray, for, I lead them in prayer because they, they come for healing. And I can't, I can't pray for you for healing just like that. Hallelujah. You don't mention Jesus. I, I didn't mention Jesus in the prayer. But God heard. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Make the purpose of God the priority of your life. Make the interest of God the interest of your life. In Psalm 132, verse 1 to 5, David vowed that he will not sleep until he built God a house. In all that you do, inject the interest of God inside it. Inject it. Inject it. I like to, ought to make tracks available plenty. It's not every time it will be easy to preach to people, but you can pass a paper. And pray on it first before you give it to people. To trust God that it will ch change them. And touch their lives. And finally, serve and do the will of God from the heart. In Ephesians chapter 6 and in verse 5. Ephesians chapter 6 and in verse 5. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh. With fear and trembling in singleness of your heart as unto Christ. Not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, from your very, very heart, with goodwill, doing service as unto the Lord and not unto men. Just serve God from your heart. Let it be heartily done. That was what Nebuchadnezzar was telling Daniel or Darius. Thy God, whom I bear you witness that you serve continually, he will deliver you. Let your enemy bear you witness. Let the unbelievers bear you witness that you are serving a God who cannot fail. You are serving the living God. Let them bear you witness. Heartily. Where even those who hate you will say, I don't like that man, but he's a true Christian. It's a new day for you. Did you gain anything tonight? Stand up on your feet.